NPR TV. I'm Jonah Wallen in our Tiki Room at WonderCon in Los Angeles. Sitting to my right is another LA uh, uh, native. You're not a native, are you? No, I was born in New York, and but I grew up in San Francisco, so California native. California is your, your, your place. Yeah. Well, he lives in LA too, Mr. Yeah. Paul Dini. Thank you for coming out here. Sir, Jonah, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. I'd start, I'm going to ask you um, a, a bit of a loaded question, so yes. bear with me. Sure. Is Harley Quinn the greatest creator character character created in the last twenty five years? Yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she is. I, I will not. You're deny. not biased at all. No, no. I mean, today I'm, I'm walking around and I see every iteration of her. And I was actually telling somebody the next time I write her in a cartoon, I'm going to put her in the weirdest outfit I can think of. I think maybe uh, uh, bib overalls and a bathrobe and a derby hat or something, just to see them. You know, some some cosplayer attempt it. You know, that's I, I'm I'm watching what's been happening to Harley Quinn over the last yes. couple of years. And I'm sure you've been watching it even sure, closer yeah, yeah. than me. And it's been amazing to watch the evolution of the fandom around the character. Yeah, it's certainly been pushed forward by Suicide Squad. Uh, yep, uh, but it seems like. Now, this is a very versatile character that she can be interpreted in any number of ways, yeah. yet there's still that, what's that core? What would you say is the core that makes all of those fit together still? Well, there is a sort of manic unpredictability to her that she is, um, I, I think of her as almost like a sprite who goes out and does what she wants. She's very passionate about what she's doing, for, for better or for worse. So if she's on your side, it's great. If she's against you, then that's not so good for you right. because she will you know, go after you with the same sort of passion. But I think she's a character who does kind of represent passion and, and just a son of a joie de vivre, just wants to go out and do whatever she wants. And I'm happy to see her break away from the Joker. And I think, you know, when I had been writing her in, in Gotham City Sirens and, and a few other places, I was moving her farther away from that, where she'd still have the odd moments of, does he like me or not? Should I go back to him or not? And maybe that'll always be a, a smaller element of her character, but I think of her now as more of a, you know, a super screwball who's just out, uh, you know, doing what she, what she does. She loves completely and totally whatever, you know, she loves and then moves on, you know, the same way. So she does have this sort of manic quality to her. But I think there's an innocence to her th that yes. a lot of people respond to. And that's especially apparent in the all the cosplayers I see is that they're not doing the mean version of her. They're doing the more funny, upbeat, uh, or their own interpretations of her. That's a really interesting and hard line to kind of travel around because she does have this great innocence. And I was going to ask you, is that innocence real? But it actually is. Yeah. Uh, on top of all this other craziness that she is a part of, mm -hmm. that innocence is actually real. I can't think of any other character where you can do something like that. No, I wrote something with her recently where she's just, it just opens when we're walking down the street and like, I'm on my way to do something fun. And she's, you know, going to do something. And then she gets swept up in a bigger, um, a bigger uh, adventure. And, uh, you know, there's no Joker, there's no Batman, there's no nothing in it like that. It's just her out on her own. Okay. And it's very refreshing for me to write the character like that. In fact, that's my favorite, now my favorite way of writing her is to just make her out on her own, just, just live in life one minute at a time. And I love the book. I love what Jimmy and Amanda are doing with yes. her in the book. When I asked you that question, I knew it was a little bit of a setup. Uh -huh. You're going to say yes, of course. But I really did rack my brain before when I was prepping uh -huh. for this interview. And... When you look at the big screen and the, and the characters that are making it to the big screen these days, these are 40, 50, 60, 70 year old characters. Yeah. Generally not the 20 to 25 year old right. characters, and, and, and generally not new characters. I, is there another character that's been creating comics since you created Harley with Bruce that comes close, Deadpool. in your opinion? Deadpool, absolutely. And look at their costumes. They're both red and black. I mean, I, I, I actually did something the other day where I went, Deadpool, red and black, Harley, red and black, Mickey Mouse, red and black. Maybe there's something to that color combination that just makes popular characters. Because I said to somebody, God, she's like Mickey Mouse. She's, uh, she's everywhere and in, in all these different permutations of her. So, uh, you know, so if you're looking to make money off a cartoon character, uh, make her make them red and black and white, I guess. You know, I don't, I don't know, like uh, with Deadpool. All right, that sure did him a, 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 you know, that sure captured his look. And, and uh, he's not... Um, not hurting these days. Not at all. No. But you just brought up an interesting question. This is a little bit of fantasy uh, 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 comic book type stuff that we yeah. can get into. Who'd, who'd win in a fight? Bare knuckle boxing, Harley Quinn or Deadpool? Um, God, I, I think they either both kill each other or they'd wind up getting married. <laughs> you know, they throw a first punch and just like, you want to... You, you, you want to get a chimichanga? Sure. You know, and off they'd go together. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Yeah.